again i thank you and welcome to this um, our sap weekly webinar the purpose of this session is basically to introduce you all with the sap ecosystem this session today is not about any specific module this is not about any specific product instead this is about introducing an sap ecosystem different modules different functions and different products which we have in sap ecosystem so at the end of the session you shall have an idea that at least on high level what kind of products what kind of modules what kind of functions are there in sap ecosystem thank you again and i welcome you to the session let me start uh, briefly introducing myself uh, my name is dilip saab uh, i've been doing sap since 1998 so what uh, you know, many years i've been doing sap um, in my professional experience i was associate partner in ibm uh in us i was senior director with accenture and capgemini and uh, i did uh, several implementation of sap uh, uh in my past experience i have been teaching and i taught many thousand students in the sap ecosystem what we going to discuss today so what we going to discuss today and what is our agenda today is as follows what you see at your screen so we'll talk about sap's background we'll talk about sap product and service portfolio we'll talk about the uh, sap data transactions uh, we will talk in the later part in in my session about sap s4 hana so what is sap s4 hana and uh, i will also talk about some new dimensional products and i will also talk about some uh, new sap cloud applications so there are several new dimensional product which is sap has acquired or come up uh, last several years so i will give an idea about what those products are and uh, in the last i will talk about sap implementation and next step so SAP background. So SAP established in 1972. So it's a very old company. So if you see from 1972 till 2020, it's almost 48 years old company. So very very old company from IT perspective. 48 years is a pretty long time. Um, with one estimate of Gartner, 87%. 87% of fortune 500 companies 87% of fortune 500 companies in the in in the world in use sap so very prominent presence as far as um, sap is presence in the in the market is concerned 87% of fortune 2000 company is a significant number now talking about sap product portfolio this product portfolio which you see at the screen is not the complete portfolio apart from this product portfolio which i'm going to describe there are also several other products in sap and uh, in the later part of my discussion today i will also talk about those new dimensional products as well okay so if you look at uh, let me uh, continue with this presentation on uh, so if you see here uh, we have um, uh, in the center of this slide there is something called sap erp so erp is stand for uh, enterprise resource plan so this erp is a central product okay so when most of you 
are planning to learn SAP, you're talking about this product, which is called SAP ERP. When I say that, you know, 87% of Fortune 2000 company use SAP, we are talking about SAP ERP. ERP means Enterprise Resource Planning. This is a central product, and no wonder this product is also being put into the center of the slide. Then there are some other products also. So there is a SAP CRM. CRM means Customer Relationship Management. There is SCM, which is Supply Chain Management. There's another product called PLM. PLM basically means Product Life Cycle Management. There's another product which is called SRM, which is Supplier Relationship Management. There's SAP Marketplace. Then uh, there is a product called SAP BI, or Business Intelligence. And then there is a product called SAP Enterprise Application. Then there's a SAP Financial. And in the bottom, there is a SAP SCM, which is Human Capital Management. And they are not all. The so dot, dot, dot basically means there are many other products. And these are the separate products. Now, there are some additional new dimensional product which are not on this slide. So in the later part of my conversation, in this presentation today, I will talk about some new dimensional products which are not on this slide. On the top, you will see there is something called SAP for industry. So what is this basically means SAP for industry? That basically means that 87%, as I mentioned, of 2000 companies use SAP. So you're talking about very diverse companies. So, you know, you talk about, like you see the aerospace and different, so 26 different industries in the world. 26 different type of industries in the world uses SAP, 26. So, aerospace and different, so like Boeing and Airbus and Bell Helicopter, um, Nike and Reebok and Adidas, which is apparel and footwear, retail like costco and home depot and messi any pharma company you talk about means uh, you name it uh, starting from uh, you know johnson johnson Merck, pfizer sanofi glaxo smith and beecham you talk about any consumer goods company like colgate palmolive and philips and in a lot of these electronic goods uh, company like apple samsung lg panasonic sony and all that so now all these companies are very different. So people will be very curious to know that how one product being used in so many different companies. So the answer to that question is, although everybody use same SAP, but based upon what industry you are in, you use that industry product. So if you see here, uh, aerospace and defense, automotive. So if you talk about um, any automotive company, uh, almost all of them use SAP. We cannot see any screen. Mr. Sir, are you sharing any screen? Yeah, I'm sharing a screen. Um, can everybody else uh, see my screen? Um, chat, please let me know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay, Gule can see it, okay. Mithul can also see it, okay. So it looks like um, uh, most people can do. Uh, Solomon, uh, I think, um, check uh, uh, your, uh, on a good meeting, there will be a uh, share a screen button. So make sure that it is on and then you can see my screen. Okay, so continuing with my presentation, SAP for industry. Now, what does that basically means? I was describing that all these diverse different company manufacturing aeroplanes and manufacturing shoes, manufacturing medicines and manufacturing oil and gas, they all use SAP. But SAP has an industry solution for all these different industries. The second thing which is not there on this slide, I also need to mention, is about country solution. Now, that's another dimension to it. 
um like sap being used in practically every country anywhere in the world so like 180 countries um or 190 countries sap is there so which basically practically means every country in any continent in north america or europe or asia africa south america and so on and so forth so based upon several countries sap also have a country solution for them like japan like korea uh, south africa um brazil um russia because a lot of these country has some specific country specific requirement so lcp also have something called country solution okay are you still on the sap production portfolio page i am still on sap product portfolio page yes that's correct and then on the bottom of it we have something called sap netweaver now sap netweaver is sap ecosystem and uh, i will also briefly talk about what sap netweaver is about now sap product evolution now let us understand this slide this is says how the product has evolved in last 48 years so there is sap r2 in the bottom of it sap r2 is the main frame system which came in 1979 then we have sap r3 and that sap r3 came in 1992 which was client server architecture then in 2004 sap came something called web services 48 years three incarnations of sap there is one more incarnation as well which we'll talk in the later part of my conversation so sap r2 based upon mainframe then came sap r3 which is based upon client server then came sap netweaver which is web services this is another view of the product evolution let us understand this sap r2 which came in 1979 41 years back then came r3 in 1992 28 years back then came sap r3 4.60 r3 means three layer architecture and then sap came with the two new dimensional products one is called crm which is customer relationship management and then another one is called apo which is advanced planner and optimizer then came sap r3 enterprise 4.7 in 2004 then r3 died this is sap erp most of you when you planning to learn sap you're talking about learning this product which is called sap erp then on the bottom you have something called sap netweaver sap netweaver is sap's newest platform and apart from sap erp sap also have a crm which is customer relationship management it is srm which is supplier relationship management it is scm which is supply chain management it has a plm which is uh, product life cycle management it has scm which is human capital management so these are several product of sap ecosystem now this is called sap diamond because it is a diamond shape and then you will also see certain colors so, so there is a green color there is a red color there is a yellow color there is a purple color and there is a blue color 
Now, what does these colors mean? What is the significance of these colors? So green is logistic. Red is finance. Yellow is HR. And these are the purpose. They have some technical aspects, workflow, industry station. And this blue means that almost entire SAP is written in a programming language called ABAP, Advanced Business Application Programming. It's a fourth generation programming language. Almost entire SAP is written in this language and that is SAP's own property language. Green is a logistic, and these are the various modules in SAP from green perspective, the customer service module, sales and distribution module, materials management module, production planning module, quality management module, plan maintenance module. Red is the finance, which include have a financial accounting, controlling, asset management, project system. Yellow is the HR, and then blue, uh, this, uh, Purple is workflow and various industry solutions. So that is what this SAP diamond basically means. These are some of the products of SAP ecosystem. Let us understand them. So we have a finance module. We take care of various financial processes. Then controlling module which take care of the various cost accounting. Then there's the HR module, which take care of various HR and people processes. Then there is a sales and distribution module, which take care of various sales and distribution processes. Then there's a production planning module, and production planning module talks about various manufacturing processes. Then there's a materials management module. We take care of the various purchasing and procurement processes. Then there is a customer service module. And customer service module take care of the various customer service after sales service issues. Then we have project system project system, taking and managing project. Warehouse management. Warehouse management, take care of the various warehousing processes. You have a warehouse, distribution center, you manage it. You have a quality management, where you can take care of the various quality processes. And that is where we have a quality management. And then we have plant maintenance. These are some of the modules of SAP ecosystem. Let me recap. So your finance module, controlling module, HR module, sales and distribution module, the production planning module, materials management module, customer service module, Project system module, warehouse management module, quality management module, and plant maintenance module. These are some of the modules of SAP ERP. Apart from these modules, there are several other modules which are there in the SAP ecosystem. Let's understand that. And one of the products is called CRM, Customer Relationship Management. CRM is a separate product. CRM as a product is meant for managing customer interaction. 
Now, we have here, in CRM, you have only three processes. Marketing, sales, and service. And any CRM has only these three processes, marketing, sales, and service, and ability to reach customer through multiple channels. Then we have something called APO, Advanced Planner and Optimizer. This APO is a supply chain management product. And this APO have a advanced planning and manufacturing, scheduling application of SAP. It's a separate product. So there's a demand plan. Within APO, there are these different buckets of the processes and functions. Demand planning, supply network planning, production planning and detailed scheduling, transportation planning, weekly scheduling. They allow you to do the planning from the horizon of years, the month, to the days, to the minute. Supply chain management. There's another product that is called SRM or also, also called Supplier Relationship Management. SRM or Supplier Relationship Management is SAP's product which provides advanced um, procurement, sourcing, supplier connectivity, how you can interact with your customers and suppliers. So all these different functions are provided by a SAP. Then we have SAP NetWeaver. SAP NetWeaver is SAP's newest platform. SAP NetWeaver, if you see in the bottom, there's a web application server. So web application server, that is where SAP lives and breathes. Then there is a separate product called XI and PI, which provides Eddie SAP's middleware. There's another product, MDM, Master Data Management, which is SAP's central data management uh, business application. There's a BI and BW. BI means business intelligence. BW means business warehouse. This provides SAP's central reporting platform where you can do reports, dashboards, etc. You have enterprise portal for single sign on. Then your mobile infrastructure means SAP has mobility architecture and platform as well. Power of collaboration. So, a lot of these new dimensional products, if you look at this slide, in the center of this slide, we have an enterprise. Then we have suppliers in China, Indonesia, Malaysia. I have a contact manufacturers in Brazil and South Africa, Mexico. I have a logistic partners in various ports. I have a various financial service providers in Europe and various other partners. A lot of these products which we discussed and spoke in the later part of our conversation, they are necessarily providing you not ability to manage your enterprise, but they are allowing you your ability to also connect with the business partners. Because you can manage your business effectively, but if you cannot manage your interaction, with your business partners effectively, then your ability to do business is only so much. Okay, And that is why this is important function for a lot of people. Now, SAP data and transaction, how does SAP work? Or any transaction for that matter works. 
or any application for that matter works. So there is input and uh, there is output. So there is input of uh, different type of uh, transactions, right? Like in any application, there is input and uh, then there is output. So there is input of the various type of data, organized data, master data. And then there is output of the different type of transactions. So there is input and there is the output. Now, SAP produces a lot of data. Good news, SAP produces a lot of data. Bad news, SAP produces a lot of data. It's a good news and also it is bad news. Now, why it is so? SAP produce a lot of data, so that's, a, that's good. What's wrong with that? In fact, nothing is wrong with that. But we should be able to utilize the data. If you can make sense, if you can utilize the data, then data is important. Then we are good. But if we cannot utilize this data which SAP produces, then it's not a good news. In SAP, there are a lot of ways to do reporting. So ABAP report, queries, and specializer, LIS, and all that. So there are many, many different tools which are available which can be used to perform reporting. But if you see here, BI and BW, business intelligence or BW means business warehouse, these are the SAP's central product. And this is the one which uses the SAP or provide SAP the central reporting capability. So we can make sense, we can utilize the data and we can produce useful information. Now, Now we want to come and talk about SAP s hana We talked about SAP produce a lot of data and we said this is a good news and it's a bad news. And it's a good news because it produces a lot of data. And if we can make sense out of it, if we can utilize that data, if we can make proper information out of the data, but if I cannot, then obviously it is a wasted opportunity. That is where SAP HANA come into the picture. So this SAP HANA, which you see here, is SAP's own database. So SAP HANA is fundamentally, is SAP's own database. SAP HANA provides an advanced reporting and analytics capabilities. SAP HANA. It is not classical RDBMS. It is in the memory processing database. It's a different type of database. What does this database do? So this and why this database is being so talked about? Because if I take 77 minutes to process information before SAP S4 HANA, then with SAP, S4, with SAP HANA, we can process that information in 13 seconds. So 77 minutes to 13 seconds. This is SAP select. So that basically means one of the primary drivers behind SAP HANA database is to provide an advanced in-memory processing database technology which can enable us to process a large quantum of data in a relatively very short period of time. So being able to analyze a big amount of the data in a very, very short period 
of time. That is what SAP HANA database allows to do. Now, how this evolution has happened? So, SAP HANA is a database which was which came in the market in 2011. So it's a lot of time actually, yeah? 2011 to 2020 is almost 10 years we are talking about. So this database SAP introduced to the market 10 years back. Then SAP came with something called SAP Business Warehouse or SAP HANA. And uh, SAP HANA was introduced onto this business warehouse. Okay. Then SAP was introduced in 2013 of business suite, which basically means on ERP. So you can use ERP on a HANA database. Then we have a simple finance. So there is a simple finance here. And then SAP came in 2015, something called SAP S4 HANA. So we have here SAP S4 HANA. Now, it is very important to understand, SAP HANA is a database. SAP S4 HANA, S for HANA, it is fourth generation ERP. Remember, in the beginning, I talked about three incarnations. S4 HANA is the fourth incarnation of SAP. So SAP S4 HANA is a new fourth generation enterprise application. Okay. That is what SAP S4 HANA is, which came in 2015. And why SAP came with this uh, new dimensional product? We can talk about many, many, many things. What does this SAP S4 HANA do? But if you see here, you have something called almost 2,000 times faster analytics and reporting. So you can have a very high speed processing analytic cap capacity in which you can analyze a significant amount of the data in a very short period of time. It's like in your car putting a very high velocity engine. So you can jump and do run the car at a very high speed and very optimal efficiency. That is what um, SAP S4 HANA allow you to do because it is a fourth gen gen uh, generation ERP product. Now, in this slide, we see that here SAP S4 HANA is the core of the intelligent enterprise. SAP S4 HANA is the core of intelligent enterprise. Now, what is the meaning of that? Core of intelligent enterprise. So here, if you look at it, this is the new dimension for us. In the beginning, I talk about the SAP portfolio. Now, this is another set of portfolio. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of that? So here we have SAP S4 HANA. So this is SAP S4 HANA. Then apart from SAP S4 HANA, we have a several other products. SAP has something called SAP C4 HANA. SAP C4 HANA. talks about a central CRM system, SAP C4HANA. 
Then there is another product called SAP Kankar. SAP Kankar is another product of SAP on cloud. So if you see SAP S4 HANA also works on cloud. SAP S4 HANA also work in, in premises. So SAP S4 HANA work either way. You can run SAP S4 HANA on the cloud. We see that here cloud. You can also run SAP S4 HANA in premises also. SAP C4 HANA is only on the cloud. Only option which is for SAP C4 HANA is cloud. Then the separate product. Now this is another suite of products which you're talking about. So think about how large this ecosystem is. It's an ocean. That is how SAP is a market leader because it is such a huge area of the products. SAP Kankar. SAP Kankar was a separate product and SAP purchased SAP Kankar a few years back. SAP Kankar allows you to manage your expenses and all that. Um, so it's a very um, useful product from that perspective. Then there's SAP Success Factor. SAP Success Factor is SAP's another product which is based upon the cloud. So this is another cloud based product. Now what does this do? This product also success factor also provides advanced HR human resources function. And it is only based upon cloud. Success Spectrum was a separate company, SAP purchased it. Then there is a company called SAP Ariba. Ariba is another cloud based application. And that application is basically Ariba provides you advanced purchasing functions and it's a very successful product. And that also works only on the cloud. Then you have SAP Field Glass. This is another third product of SAP ecosystem, which allow you to do your mobile workforce management, SAP Field Glass. And then there are many other products which you can connect. And that is the fourth dimension a fourth incarnation of the product. So I have, if you see from the second and third slide now, there's so much array of different products which SAP ecosystem has. Now, continue. Now, if you see here in the bottom, the cloud, you know, this is the cloud if you see here. So SAP, when you say SAP cloud, so SAP has its own cloud. SAP also work on Amazon Web Services. See that AWS. So SAP also work on Amazon Web Services Cloud also. They have a relationship with them. SAP also work on Microsoft Cloud also, Microsoft Azure. And SAP also works on the Google Cloud as well. So these are the three prominent cloud companies which SAP works directly. Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, AWS. And of course, SAP has their own cloud as well. Now, this has uh, some more interesting things. Now, if you look at it here, in the center of the slide, we have something called SAP S4 HANA. Then in the bottom, you will see something called robotics and machine learning. Now, what does this robotics and machine learning basically mean? So SAP also have a product for robotics and machine learning or artificial intelligence. Because as, as you all know that nowadays we are all talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, internet of things or IoT. So SAP should have its own 
platform and should also have its own um, product for that. So yes, SAP also has a product for artificial intelligence and also internet thing. And that product is called Leonardo. It's called SAP Leonardo, which is SAP's product for um, these uh, robotics and machine learning. User experience, SAP enhancing his user experience with the new protocol Fury. Big data, we talk about HANA. We talk about cloud. Business networks, which basically means we talked about some of the products like uh, Ariba and others. They allow you to connect with the business partners. Then we have a blockchain and a lot of reporting and analytics in SAP ecosystem. So this is SAP's capability. This is the, the digital core of business transformation. SAP implementation. So SAP is not the answer successful without extensive implementation and support. Last about 45 minutes and so I've been talking to you, SAP is this, SAP is that, and so and so forth. Well, SAP although is immensely powerful, but there is no Harry Potter in SAP. It's not that you buy some uh, SAP and then some magic will happen. Nothing will happen. If you don't implement SAP correctly, then we can also lose and we can also stop production as well. That is also possible. So SAP is not the answer successful without extensive implementation and after implementation support, both. So although SAP is immensely important, but it has to be implemented, right? And after implemented, it has to be constantly being supported. If you implement right, and after implement, if you support right, you get business benefits. And if you don't support it, if you don't implement correct, you get no benefit at all. There's no Harry Potter in SAP. It's not that you buy some software, from Walmart and put into every computer of your company and some magic will happen. Nothing will happen. It has to be implemented correctly. And that is done by consultants. And that is why in SAP during implementation and after implementation, which is support, the role of SAP consultant is immensely, immensely important. And uh, that is why this gentleman is snoring, yeah? I can, I can hear it snow. But that's not what SAP consultants are supposed to do. SAP consultants are not supposed to snow. It is responsibility of the consultant to do. So that's why in SAP world, it is not just the software, but the right implementation of that software is very important. And that is done by the consultant. That is why the role of the consultant is very important. I mean, I'm doing SAP since 98, it's almost 22 years. I'm not alone. There are many dinosaurs like me. And I survived many ice ages just doing one SAP because it's not just the software. It's also how you implement it. Next step. So, so this is my email address. These are that my thing com. This is my email address, uh, 973-885-7245. You're very welcome to make a note of my email address, my phone number. Uh, I think most of you I have already spoken. Some of you probably I may not, but um, you know, you're know you very, very welcome to um, call me. Uh, very, very, uh, you know, you're welcome to email me uh, at my email address. I will be calling you and um, address any questions or sector uh, which you might be having. So with that, um, I would uh, like to thank you all uh, for coming in class and uh, listening to this conversation. And uh, I really appreciate your time. And uh, I will be in touch 
I will be talking to you and uh, I will be answering any questions or sector which you might be having. With that, thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and talk to you soon. Bye.